I don't like that the law does not treat text messages like spoken words because they should be. Like, I think it's illegal to wiretap people's phone calls or record them without a warrant. I don't think there's anything that requires an ISP to record audio of your phone calls and then store that audio for a year or two. But my fictional character James Grider has a good way of explaining what needs to be done to avoid having people get in trouble if they text something illegal. So our citizens are kept safe from ending up in government jails because of technology and bad brain wiring. He has written a piece about it, so let's read the piece that he has written about it. James Grider is a pundit who writes journal entries about various interesting subjects. It pisses me off that text messages are admitted in a court of law as evidence. For as long as human beings existed, for the longest time, the only way we could com communicate is speaking to each other within range of audibility. Then we learned how to write. Then there were other electronic methods. Beautiful thing about speech is that unless someone records it, there is never any proof you said anything. You could whisper in the ear of a person that you hate, that you're going to kill them, and there's no proof that you actually whispered it. The cops can show up, but they might do nothing without proof. And what would the prosecutor do? Would they file the case with zero evidence that you whispered the threat, other than the victim's word on it? No. But now, just because we changed the way we communicate, because it's not just spoken words anymore, but electronic messages. Somehow they must be treated differently. So if I'm pissed at someone, and I text them that I'm going to kill them, they can show it to the police, and I will get arrested. Unless I can convince the police that I lost my phone, and somebody else must have typed in the message like whoever found or stole my phone. But why should I have to do that? Text messages should be considered the same as spoken words. Like spoken words, we should pretend they are there one moment and gone the next. It shouldn't fucking matter that they can be read again and again and seen by others indefinitely. They should be treated in spirit like spoken words. So the law should be altered where texts are like spoken words. So here is what happens under the change to the law that I propose. The only way a text message can be used as evidence is if the police or a witness was looking over the shoulder of the person typing the message into their phone and hitting send. Then you can go, Aha! I saw you typing to your girlfriend that you're going to cut her throat. Now I will get sworn in as a witness and testify against you. But if I hide in a corner somewhere and nobody sees me type the message, or they can't see the screen of my phone as I type it, well then, the police and the prosecutor are shit out of luck. This is highly important. We can't let technology change the established parameters of our humanity. Up until the mid-90s, we have lived for millennia, think about this, for millennia, with certain established survival skills. We had a clear idea of limitations of the human perception abilities, and we took advantage of that to survive. We learned how to sneak, how to do certain things without witnesses. We have evolved to interact 
in certain ways, and we have evolved traditional methods of evading punishment or capture that have worked for millions of years. We can't allow technology to upheave all that. If you, get ang if you got angry at someone and you threatened them, you simply made sure strangers willing to testify against you did not overhear you make the threat. But now, for the sake of convenience, we created new communication technologies. We can text and write to each other electronically now. But you should still be able to get away with sending a text, as you would with spoken word. The principle being, if I don't want to be caught by witnesses sending this illegal text message, I will not allow witnesses to see me typing, typing it into my phone. But you might say, well, the text is there forever. There is a record of you sending it. The recipient uh, can show it to just about everyone as proof. Well, that should be irrelevant. The law should treat the text like spoken words. The air vibrations called sound were there and gone. And texts should be treated the same way under the law. Doesn't matter that they stay there forever and everybody can see them and know where they came from. There should be a law that makes it so that that doesn't matter as evidence. There are people out there that are angry and mentally ill. Not everyone's lives are cheery. It's not smooth sailing for everyone. People get angry. People threaten each other. Texting has now replaced face-to-face -face human voice interaction. You get mad, and in an uncontrollable impulse, you text, I am going to kill you, or give me money, or I will leak the porn tape that we made together as revenge. So, we have a death threat or an extortion threat that was texted. Right now, the victim, which may be subjective as to whether they're truly a victim or not, can show the text message to the cops, and it's evidence of a crime, and the sender will be arrested. But what if we changed the law so that the message is treated like spoken words? We pretend it's the same as if the sender and the victim met in a room somewhere and the perp simply spoke those words to the victim in private. So now when the victim calls the police under, under my proposed changed, change to the law, the police will have to say, we're sorry. If there are no witnesses who saw him type the text message, it will be very hard to file this case with the prosecutor. See? Texts become treated just like spoken words. There would have to be witnesses who could testify to seeing the text message being sent. This is the only way a text message could be used as evidence. There is a story of a woman who said she killed her husband in self-defense because he was attacking her son. But the jury indicted her anyway because she had sent threatening texts to her husband months earlier. Um, and those threatening texts gave reasonable, reasonable belief she might have killed the husband on purpose rather than in self-defense. But if she had spoken the threats to him in the privacy of their bedroom face to face, that would have never come up as evidence. Well, text messages should be treated the same way. It doesn't matter that unlike spoken words, they stay around in the ISP records forever for all to see. That should be disregarded. I don't care that it's delusional to do so. I don't care if they clearly point at guilt. Well, the guilty party just simply gets to go free. That's the way it is, because this is about something bigger than busting someone 
for a threat against someone's life. This is about our ability in the face of technology to still be able to use this technology for our convenience, but also be able to evade the law in the digital age just as effectively as, if we, as we have done across thousands of years in the analog age. That's more important than anything else. That's what will preserve our humanity in the face of ever-escalating technological advancements. That's what will keep us free and keep a level playing field so the government does not grow unbeatable because of some stupid gadgets. Texting with someone else a plan to kill grandma and make it look like an accident so you can get her large inheritance should be treated the same as if you met face to face in a dark corner alone somewhere and the conversation was made in whispers that are irretrievable forever. It doesn't matter if there's a warrant to obtain such a text messages. Doesn't matter that unlike some whispers in a dark corner, the whole world can see the message because they're stored on a server forever. They cannot be used in a court of law or to, to arrest anyone unless a witness comes, up, comes forward saying, I saw them typing these messages on their phone live as it was happening and I will t testify to that. This way, texts become treated by humanity the same as spoken words. Too bad for the pigs if they don't like it. Pigs are arrogant. We invent technology like this for our convenience, not to have it hinder our ability to evade the law that we have enjoyed for, for millennia before this stupid technology was invented. The pigs want to take this technology and use it against us as forensic evidence to screw up our lives. Take that power away from the pigs. James Grider's twin sister Carmela said, so, James, what do you suggest should be done to bring about such a change? James said, Well, everybody right now needs to start petitioning Congress. On top of that, pigs should be killed. I go on Yahoo News every once in a while, and there's a story where yet another pig was shot in cold blood in the line of duty, and everyone in the comments is crying and upset. Oh, poor pig! Everybody is crying and whining when they should be jumping for joy that there's one less pig out there to use your text messages against you the next time you get mad at someone and because of bad brain wiring you text them a death threat. Carmela said, Why don't people just refrain from texting death threats or blackmail if they know text messages can be read later by investigators, unlike spoken words? To this James answered, Because sometimes we can't always meet face to face to say these things to each other in privacy. So we may use texts, social media postings, and email instead. But logically, all those things should be treated as if they were spoken words. Spoken words. Words spoken a single time to a recipient through voice. There one moment and gone the next. We have to pretend that it is that way with text messages, even if logically and factually it's not. That's the only way we can preserve the freedoms we would have otherwise had in the decades before the mid-90s. That is far more important than, you know, preventing a few murderers from going free. This is something that generations and generations would benefit from, while Preventing murderers from going free will only affect, uh, benefit a small handful of people. James Grider is right. I just dread that such idea will never come to pass. I feel like humanity 
enjoys all this technology helping bust people for stuff they would have gotten away with otherwise. Technology should only provide convenience. There is no convenience if all it does is aid the government in making us walk in a tighter line. It just makes all these inventions seem dreadful and upsetting. A lot of times when I hear about smartphones and all this interconnectedness and how someone has a video proving this and proving that and text message records that condemn someone of this and that in a court of law, I just feel disgusted. There's no level playing field anymore. I imagine our lives suddenly being like a, a Call of Duty match, where the enemy team, this enemy team being the government, has a hack that gives them a permanent VSAT and your team doesn't. But for some reason all, the, all your teammates around you are cheering that on as a good thing. And that's how I feel.